having better mechanisms to build the memory that's powering AI agents is fundamental. And that's one of the reasons I've been talking about knowledge graphs, because they are the way to make agents work much better than just using simple similarity search, vector databases, okay? So I'm gonna show you here how you can build a knowledge graph like this for your agent. It's just gonna take a few lines of code. We're gonna be using Cockney, which is an open source project. But before I do that, let me show you something that is extremely funny, but true, okay? So here is a comparison of what happens when you build an agent using Cockney you're gonna get back 89.4% answer relevancy from your agent. When you ask a question, that is how accurate Tagni will be answering your question. If you use ChatGPT directly and just rely on their training data, probably your answer relevancy is gonna be around 5%. If you use vector store, you'll get back potato and it's honey. But it's true, vector stores are not enough to build good agents, okay? So what is Cagni? Well, this is an open source project and this is their repo and you can get started with it with just a few lines of code. And I'm gonna show you how to build something and how it works and how to create that knowledge graph. It's extremely simple, okay? They have this notebook. I make just small modifications to it for this video but they have this notebook right on their GitHub repo, okay? So the notebook starts by installing the libraries and then they go straight away into configuring the environment. You are going to need an OpenAI API key to run Cogni. They use, they tell you here, they use GPT-40 mini internally, so you need that API key, okay? So what are we going to be doing today? We're gonna be downloading a you know, piece of text with information inside. And that text I'm gonna show you, uh, here it is. It's just information about car manufacturers. We get information about Audi, BMW, Porsche, et cetera. And you get information about tech companies. And that information is just a paragraph or two or a couple sentences about that specific car manufacturer, okay? So that is the text that we're working with. Imagine you're building an agent and you want to answer questions about that text. You're building an application in general and you want to answer questions about that text, okay? So that we are going to be downloading here. And we are, let me actually uh, run this. We are, these lines here, we're gonna clean Cognit's memory. We're gonna, you know, uh, prune it because I've been running this notebook multiple times. And then I'm going to be adding the text that we want to process. That is sort of like the back end of Cockney, uh, of Cockney here, all of the content, the raw data. And then we're gonna upload an ontology. Now, this is pretty key here. You don't need to have an ontology, but if you have, you can improve the information by a lot. An ontology is basically, think of like a blueprint that adds information, adds entities, and explains or describes the relationship between those entities. Like in this particular case, I'm gonna look up for Audi here. You get this section of Audi, so you get the entity Audi, and then you get that it produces, and you get the Audi e-tron, that's the, another entity, and it also produces the R8, and it also produces the A8, and in Dennis, the type of that entity is a car manufacturer. It's also a named individual. So you get the idea. This ontology here explains your data, adds a lot of color to your data. Now, you don't have to have it. You can use Cogni without an ontology. And what's gonna happen is that Cogni will extract the entities and will infer the relationships from the raw data but obviously having an ontology is a huge plus. So this line here added the text to Cogni and also Cognified, so created the knowledge graph using the ontology. And here is the line where we're using the ontology to generate that knowledge graph. Now, if we run this, we're gonna get this knowledge graph here, okay? 
And I want you to see how cool this is. So for example, we have the audit entity right here. Now we know that the audit entity, there is a line. Let me actually make it a little bit bigger. There is a line from Audi here saying that it produces the A8, okay? And the A8 is a luxury car. You see that relationship here? The A8 is a luxury car. Now the Audi here also produces, there is another line down here that it produces the Audi e-tron, which is an electric car, which the Mer uh, Mercedes EQS is also an electric car. You see, this is like a huge graph of knowledge that explains the text. All of the items or the entities that were in that text are here and their relationships. And this makes for a much, much better memory for your application. So how do we use that? That's what I'm gonna show you right now. After having this, now we can search, so we can call Cogni search using the graph completion type, that's the query type. And we can ask a question like, what are the exact cars and their types produced by Audi? Okay, so this is an exact question that I'm sending and I'm gonna be using the graph completion and let's look at the answer. It says, Audi produces the following cars and their types, the R8, e-tron and the A8 luxury car, okay? Notice how it even includes this luxury car, electric car, sports car right here. All of that is information that was provided through the ontology and the text. This is pretty awesome. Now, if you ask the same question to ChatGPT, obviously, uh, directly, obviously ChatGPT will have to rely on its training information. And if something is not in their training data, well, ChatGPT won't be able to answer, or it will be too verbose. It will be, you know, going on and on and on about multiple models of cars when we only care about these three models. Here is another example. So this is scenario number two, where we use Cogni without the ontology. So we're just relying on the text as it comes. No ontology. Notice that we add the input here, and then we generate the knowledge graph and we're gonna get something like this when we do that. Uh, notice that now if we find Audi, Audi is right here. We know that Audi is a car manufacturer and it you know, contains the root entity here. There's nothing else. There is no information about models because we did not upload the ontology and the text does not speak about models. So this is what we get without the ontology. We can still search that knowledge graph, like if I go down here, the next cell will search, actually this one here, will ask exactly the same question, what are the exact cars and their types? But unfortunately, obviously, the knowledge graph will not contain that information because it was not part of the ontology. So now you get the exact cars and their types produced by Audi are not specified in the provided context. By the way, you can also use Cogni search to just do rack completion. So if you care about vector-based rack, so this is going to do that, basically chunking the text and trying to find using similarity search the best results. You can also do that. But the knowledge graph search is the real, real main dish of this dinner here. This is super, super cool. I really recommend you, you go to their GitHub repo, check their, you know, their simple example. It literally takes a few lines of code for you to get started. So take whatever content you have, cognify it, check the knowledge graph, decide whether you want to add an additional ontology on top of that and start using this because this is super cool. I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.